Okay, let me teach you about this OAuth thing. OAuth is used in a lot of different ways and in different projects, but before we get into all the various ways it's used, let's start with what OAuth is actually created for. The original intended use. First of all, you can guess from the name, OAuth has something to do with auth. The question is, does the auth here mean authentication or authorization? Well, the short answer is OAuth is meant for authorization and not authentication, okay? Also, more importantly, OAuth was originally created not for a service to authorize a person, it was meant for a service to authorize another service. Now you might go, come on Kaushik, are you crazy? Why would a service want to authorize with another service? Hmm, well, first of all, good question. Secondly, don't call me crazy, okay? Okay, well, let me explain what I mean. Let's take this classic example of a photo printing service. You must have seen websites like this where you give them an image file and you pay them to ship printed photos to your home address. Imagine you're starting a new photo printing business that lets people upload photos to your website and they can order prints of these photos. Now, if you code your website and deploy it and people sign up, everything is good. But here is the thing. Nobody keeps photos on their machines anymore. They use the cloud. And so you keep getting this feature request to provide users the ability to import their photos from somewhere like Google Drive and then print it directly from there without the users having to download and upload again. Okay, that's a fair ask. Now, what do you have to do to implement this import from Google Drive feature in your application. You need to connect to the user's Google Drive account and access their files. But wait, how can your application do that? The user's files on Google Drive need Google authentication. How can you write code for your website that can authenticate with Google on behalf of your users? Well, here's something you can do. You can ask the user for their Google ID and password. You can say, hey user, do you want me to print your photos on Google? Well, Google doesn't give me access. So here's my screen where you enter your Google ID and password and you just give them to me. I will log into your Google account and access your photos and print them. Will this work? Well, it'll work in theory, but do you think users will hand you their Google ID and password? Are you kidding me? No, they probably won't. Why? Because they don't trust you. What they want to give you is access to just certain photos. They don't want to give you access to their whole Google Drive and email and everything else, right? Now you can say, no dear user, I promise to access just your files that you mentioned and I promise to throw out the password after I'm done. I'm totally not saving that. But there's no guarantee that the service is going to do that. So while this works in theory, this is not practical. Now we can say Google Drive has a share feature. You can ask the user to share the files out and then give the link to them in your service. But there are problems here. What if the users don't want to share files out to anyone? Also, what if it's a different scenario where sharing isn't an option? For example, think of the scenario where your service wants to access the list of your user's friends to send invites to the application. There's no way you can ask the user to share their address book. Such a feature just doesn't exist. So how do you have a third-party service authorized with the Google address book service as your user without the user providing their credentials. Well, this is where OAuth comes in. To solve this problem of services trying to access each other on behalf of the user, there was the standard created called OAuth. There was a version 1.0 of the standard, OAuth 1.0, but the current version is the most widely used. This is OAuth 2.0. This and the subsequent videos in the series, when I say OAuth, just assume that I'm referring to OAuth 2.0, okay? That's the most widely used version today. Okay, so how does OAuth work? A very commonly used analogy that's used to help people understand OAuth is this valet key model for cars. Let me explain. You must have heard of parking attendants or valets. I'll be honest, I haven't met them myself. I'm definitely not rich enough to have my car parked by a valet, but I've heard of them. The idea is this rich guy drives up to a parking garage and he gets down and hands his key to the valet and say, hey, Mr. Valet guy, can you please park this car for me? He may not say it so nicely, but this is the message that will be conveyed. The valet takes the key, 
drives the car, finds a parking spot, and parks the car there. Okay, but here's the thing. Rich people drive expensive cars, okay? They carry expensive things. So what if a malicious valet takes the car keys and takes the car for a long, long drive or opens the trunk or glove compartment and looks at what's inside? It's reasonable for the car owner to be hesitant to hand over the car keys to the valet. So this is why some cars come with an additional key called the valet key. The valet key is just like the main car key, but with reduced access. This valet key can start and stop the car, but it cannot open the trunk or the glove compartment. It cannot open the fuel tank, you know, restrictions like that. If a car owner has such a key, they would be more open to giving that to the valet because they know that the valet cannot do a whole lot with that key, apart from the intended purpose. So here the car owner, this person is using two services, the car service and the valet service. And the valet service needs access to the car service directly to do the job. So rather than give the complete credentials of the car service to the valet service, rather than the giving the master key to the valet service, the car owner gives reduced or limited access to the car service by providing the valet key. This is similar to how OAuth works. OAuth in general is an authorization mechanism where services can authorize against each other on your behalf once you've given them permission. This is often referred to as delegated access for this very reason. It's also an open standard, by the way, and obviously needs to be because multiple services all over the internet need to talk to each other. So there is a spec that all these services need to follow so that they understand each other when they talk. There is a certain flow that needs to happen as well for this whole process to work. And this is called the OAuth flow. Here's how that flow works. Let's take our uh, photo printing example. You have a service here that needs to access Google Drive. We have a user who's logged into both your photo printing service and to Google. Each service trusts the user, but they don't trust each other. And the problem is you want these two things to work with each other, okay? Can your photo printing service go to Google and say, hey, can I access this user's files? Well, the Google service is obviously gonna say, I don't know you, go away. However, if both these services have OAuth implemented, the situation is a little different. Your service, when it goes to Google and says, hey, I need this user's files, Google does something interesting. It goes to the user and says, look here, man, there is this service that's been bugging me saying it wants to access some of your files. Is that legit? Do you trust it? See, here's the list of things that the service wants to do. Shall I go ahead and allow it? If the user sees the screen that says who is asking for access to that user's Google account and what are the list of permissions that that service wants. Now, if the user is a person who's trying to print the photo, they will look at this and go, okay, this is all correct. Please allow access. Now, Google says, okay, my user is verified and allowed these permissions. Okay, service, you can have access. And Google gives the service a key token called an authorization token that contains just the allowed permissions. Think of this as a valet key. It's a key with limited access, limited permissions. The photo printing service says, okay, cool, I'm gonna save this. And now every time the photo printing service needs to access Google Drive, it just hands this token with the request and says, I need access to this file. Here is this token you gave me, which has user verified access to these permissions. Let me in. Now Google looks at that token and says, hmm, okay, this is legit. This is the token that I handed last time. So you can access this. And with this token, the service has limited access to your Google account. At a high level, this is the flow. You might have seen these screens from Facebook or Google asking for permissions. This is basically what this is. The screen says, okay, this ABC service is trying to access my service on your behalf. Should I let it in? Once you accept, an access token is handed to that service, which allows future access so that you don't have to keep clicking allow every time. Now, what does this access token look like? It has to be a token that contains information about all the allowed permissions. And it also needs to be something that the service can verify. If you create a token yourself and give it to Google, it'll obviously not take it. It has to be a secure token that Google itself has created and given you. Can you guess what's a token that can contain data within it but it's also secure so that it can be verified and it cannot be modified. Yes, it's a token format called JWT. Check out this tutorial to learn everything you need to know about JWT. 
And now that you know how this flow works, it's also obvious to see why OAuth is used for authorization and not authentication. In this case, the user is actually authenticated to both these services already, right? The problem being solved is not authentication. The problem being solved is how to authorize one service with another. Now that you know the high level purpose and flow of OAuth, it's time to dive deep into the key terminologies of OAuth that you really need to understand, as well as look at the flow in finer detail. Check out this tutorial where I explain all the terminologies involved and I teach you how each step in this OAuth flow works in much more detail. I'll see you there.